are now joined by number eight ranked UFC featherweight making his bantamweight debut, Frankie Edgar. Our first question goes to Gabriel Gonzalez with Kate Cypress. Hey Frankie, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing very well. So everyone wants to know, how is the cut going down to Bantamweight going? It's going good. It really seems very similar to make it 45. Um, I, I don't anticipate any problems. You know, I'm not quite down there yet, but uh, it's going as smooth as it could possibly go. I mean, we know 45, you made it. You know, obviously no weight cut is easy, but, you know, you kind of got there pretty well over the course of your career. For Bantamweight, did you do anything in terms of in the preparation so that this fight week you're not stressing too much about it? You know, I, I just started out a little bit sooner than I normally do. Uh, I used the UFC PI, uh, Clint from Fleet PI, and everybody out there helped me out, you know, put a good nutrition plan for me. And, um, you know, and even, you know, fighting, supposed to be fighting in July 15th, that fight fell through. I was getting down pretty close. That kind of gave me some confidence knowing that, that I'd be able to make this weight. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, let's talk about that because you get to Abu Dhabi. I'm assuming you'd already done the flight and everything. And obviously you get the news, just what was it like going through that and then just the readjustment to prepare for this date now? Well, I didn't quite get to Abu Dhabi. Uh, we had to come to Vegas, you know, take a test quarantine for 24 before we head out to, uh, to Abu Dhabi. So uh, that's when I found the news that, that Pedro tested positive. So I went home from there. I took a week off, gained some weight and uh, got, re got the fight rebooked, I believe a couple of days later. And then, uh, you know, she refocused and, and got back on track. I feel like there was a rumor. Was there ever any talk of Aljamain Sterling stepping in to fight you, or was that just the internet going a little crazy? Yeah, I don't. I don't really know, honestly. Um, a lot of people were calling my name, but uh, you know, I wanted to fight Pedro. Uh, I was getting ready for Pedro, and you know, I, I heard he wasn't very sick either, so asymptomatic possibly. So I thought that was the best thing to do. Talking about Pedro Munoz, you know, tough guy. He's fought some big names. What does he bring to the table that makes him dangerous? Uh, he's got heavy, heavy hands. You know, he, he's got a great chin, hard to take down, and, and a, a superb submission game. So he's really well-rounded. You know, he's not, not an easy opponent. And, uh, being number five is the perfect guy I want to fight. Going down to Bantamweight, you're obviously a very big name, and really the division hasn't been this good in quite a while, in a lot of people's opinion. You've got a big three, Peter Jan, Aljo, Marlon, who you've trained with. Um, just first on the big three, how do you see that playing out? Who's going to come out on top with those guys? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm obviously uh, you know, biased to Marlon. He's a good friend of mine, and, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, I know what, he, what he's capable of, and uh, you know, I think he's one of the best guys in the world. And, you know, Aljamain's been on a tear, and Yan looked very impressive against Aldo. So it's going to be interesting to see how everything pans out, and uh, I'm excited to see uh, how I fit in all this. Yeah, final one for me. We do know that, you know, they're kind of very established already in the weight class, but a big win for you here. Do you feel like this is a, you know, you're on the short list if you could get a win on Saturday to maybe slide into the title picture already? You know, I don't know. Um, I just got to worry about winning my fight Saturday. Uh, winning has a way of taking care of things. And uh, if I could do that, anything's possible. You know, what I've done in my career, I'm always knocking on the door. I'm always have opportunities pre presented to me. And if it, if it does come up, of course, I jump at it. Thank you, Frankie. Thanks. Our next question is from Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Frankie, uh, I feel like we've talked about bands weight now for about two years. Wait, <laughs> talking about this. Uh, what has it been like, you know, kind of waiting for this, you know, you were going to do it last year, then that Korean zombie fight popped up, you took it, you know, you did what you did, and then you had the delays and the, and the pandemic and all these different things. Like, has it felt forever since you've actually said, I'm moving to Bantamweight, and now here's the debut? Yeah, it, it does. It does feel like, you know, I, I believe I, I made my decision last summer that I was going to go down to Bantamweight and, uh, you know, I was trying to hopefully fight in November and then, you know, that nothing panned out, then I was booked for January and then obviously the fight with Korean zombie and whatnot. And then me and Pedro have been booked a couple of times. So yeah, you know, we're finally here a couple of days away. I'm very excited to finally get this done. You know, you've always been a guy, uh, I think company man, to describe you're always there to 
step up when the UFC needs you. That zombie fight is a perfect example. But when when you heard that Pedro was out with COVID-19, I know there was people trying to get the fight with you, Jimmy Rivera, whoever it was. But did you feel like this was too big of an opportunity to pass up just to fight somebody in the division where there's a number five guy and, and this would be a huge way to introduce yourself to Bantamweight? Yeah, exactly. You know, um, I, I, I've taken some short no, short notice fights or short opponents changes and uh, didn't always work out the, the way I wanted to. So uh, I learned from some, you know, past mistakes, I guess you could say. And I said, let's just wait. You know, we got rebooked a month later. It's really not that big a deal. And, uh, you know, it, it, it just feel like I had more time to prepare, more time to, to realize I could make this wait, and it all worked out. I know your focus is only on Pedro Munoz, but I got to ask you, you're jumping into a division where you have a lot of friends at Bantamweight. You train with Cody Garbrandt. I know he's going to buy weight, but he's talked about doing both divisions. You mentioned Marlon. I know he's down at ATT, but you're still very close, very good friends with him. Aljo, I know you don't really train with him, but he comes from that same Henzo Gracie family. Uh, is it weird, you know, jumping in and, and, and challenging these guys? Do you just understand that's part of the sport? Because, again, you do have kind of a, a tight-knit group of friends and teammates. Yeah, well, you know, I think we could avoid, you know, I mean, me and Alex really don't train. We were, we were possibly talked about fighting before, so that could definitely be a possibility. I don't think I'll ever fight Marlon. And, you know, Cody, he's going down 25, so I don't have to worry about that. And, you know, we've been getting pretty close as well, too. So there's plenty of guys to fight in this weight class. Uh you know, the champion, obviously, Aljo and, and many others, Corey. And, uh, you know, there, there's plenty of guys I, I, I have uh, opportunity to go against. Yeah. You were going to get – there was the talk about the, the Corey fight, uh, you know, back in January. Then you ended up getting you – know, Pedro's obviously a phenomenal fighter. Outside the loss to Aljo, you know, he had been on a pretty incredible streak with the win over Cody in there as well. Do you feel like this is kind of the perfect matchup to introduce yourself to the division – uh, in terms of like getting you in that top five, because you've always been that guy. You never want to be, you know, not you don't ever want to be out of title contention. And this seems like a perfect matchup to get you mentioned already. Yeah, exactly. You know, Pedro's been a stud in this weight class for a while. He's got some big wins over over like very good guys. And uh, you know, a win will put me in the direction I want to be. It'll put me in the position I want to be. You know, I've been fighting the best guys since day one of, of my UFC career, and you know, I don't want that to change. And Pedro's the guy that that, that made the most sense for me. Last question, Frankie. Every fight you're in, uh, because of who you are and what you've done, is always going to have a spotlight on it. Here you are in a main event. Uh, you want to make a statement with every fight. we got a lot of big bantamweight fights coming up. Marlon's fighting Corey. Uh, you know, I think we all imagine we're going to see uh, Al Jermaine fight Peter Yan. Uh, you know, things like that. Do you feel like this is a chance to not only introduce yourself to the division, but kind of make a statement of, of who you are as a threat to that title? Yeah, you know, I know a lot of people are questioning, you know, where I'm at in my career. I'm a little bit older and, uh, you know, coming down a weight class, people are questioning, uh, you know, my abilities here. And uh, that's my, that's my, you know, I want to go out there and, you know, more so to, to prove to anybody else, just prove to myself that uh, I'm still a top dog in whatever weight class I fight in. Thanks, Frankie. Thanks, Damon. Our next question is from Jim Versalone with the Miami Herald. Thank you so much. Just curious about just how amped you get up for fights you've been doing this you've been in big fights titles but how amped do you get up we're coming off trying to get through this pandemic fights on espn it's ufc fight night what can you tell us a little bit about that and main eventing this against pedro yeah you know uh i'm just fortunate that i have the, the chance to, to do my craft you know a lot of people can't even you know work right now because of this pandemic and a lot of people are dealing with adversity and you know, go out there and, and I could do something I love, uh, you know, it it's definitely gets me excited. And, um, you know, just to fight period, but not only fight period, but fight for a main event, fight a top guy in, my di in this new division. It just makes everything uh, uh, that much more, um, you know, worth it. When Pedro got COVID, did that hit close to home to you? Did you ever experience that with anyone, family or friends? Unfortunately, hopefully not. Yeah, I had, I had probably a few, like, you know, maybe four or five friends had COVID. Uh, not, not, no one had it, you know, too bad, thankfully. So, uh, yeah, they bounced back pretty quickly. But, um, yeah, you know, people are getting sick, man. It's, uh, it's kind of kind of sucks, but uh, you just got to deal with it, I guess. Frank, did you have to train differently during the time from the beginning of the COVID period, I guess back in March and up until now and sort of just level it off, see where you're going with it? Yeah, early on, you know, New Jersey was one of the worst places. Uh, so early on, I was, uh, you know, we had a pretty strict quarantine. 
Um, but a, as we started opening up, it was uh, it wasn't too bad. I kept close people around me. I really didn't go around anywhere, anyone else. We kept the team together, and uh, you know, I had to make some adjustments, but not too bad. So this training camp was was actually really good. And who did you bring with you? I know they're smaller groups, but who did you bring with you for this fight? As far as uh, my, my coaches? Yes, your team. Yes. Yeah, Mark Henry, Ricardo Almeida, Chris Ligori, and Steve Rivera. These guys have pretty much cornered me every fight, so uh, no, no any different. So business as usual. Yeah, business as usual. Everything, uh, everything's uh, you know going the way we needed to go. And the last one for me, he fights for American Top Team. And I'm curious, when you're going against an opponent, when you bring up the camp, what camp they're with, does that add a little more to it? Do you look at the fighter differently, or, or that doesn't play a part or a factor in any of the opponents? No, it doesn't matter. The name don't even matter. It, you know, it could be anybody. I'm, I'm just fighting a, a, an avatar in a video game. You know what I'm saying? So it, it doesn't matter what, what he's done or what he hasn't done. It's like uh, he's, it's a silhouette that I'm fighting. I, you know, that, that's all I get ready for. And you've been doing that very well. So thank you, Frankie. Go get him on Saturday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Our next question is from Gabriel Pengelangan with the Dojo Drifter. Hi, how are you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So, Noah, you never really have any easy fights. You never have any tune-up fights. Is this something that you actually prefer doing, jumping into the deep end of the pool when you get into any fight or into the new weight divisions? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I, you know, I, I think I'm one of the best in, in whatever weight class I'm in. And the uh, only way to prove it is by going against the best guy. So Pedro's that guy right now. And yeah, I'm, I'm confident that I can get the job done. Yeah, and this move uh, down another weight class, is this something that you think you wish you did a bit sooner? You know, I, I'm not really a coulda, shoulda, woulda guy, you know. Um, it just is what it is. You know, I, I was able to get a title at 55. I pretty much was number two at 45 for a very long time. You know, I've been the best at, you know, or, or near the best at pretty much any weight class. So, you know, it's just going to show that, you know, that my skills and my, my technique and my heart really, really matter a lot, you know, even when I was fighting the bigger guys. Yeah, and so I'm calling from the Philippines. And, you know, Filipinos have been following your career, especially after you headlined UFC Manila. That was five years ago, and it's been a crazy career. How would you describe your career over the past five years? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's ups and downs in my career the past five years, but, uh, you know, I'm just plugging away. I'm still enjoying what I'm doing, and, uh, yeah, I'm excited for the future. And you mentioned that, you know, it's tough all around. Businesses are obviously affected by the pandemic. I understand you're a businessman with UFC Gym. So is it difficult balancing the, the business side and the fighting side of your career? Yeah, you know, it d definitely is. Um, but I got good people in place to help me out with that stuff too, especially when I have fights coming up. So, uh, you know, I kind of let them handle that aspect. But, uh, you know, like I said, this is uh, across the board tough for everybody in, in every profession. So, uh, you know, you just got to make the adjustments and, and keep it moving. And lastly for me, being a fighter, is a, it's, a, it's a crazy job. It's a tough job. What keeps you motivated? What, like, why do you do what you do? I just love to compete. Um, I love working out for a job, <laughs> get up in the morning and not having to go, uh, you know, in, in the elements and, and dig holes or, or carry pipe like I used to when I was, uh, when I was a kid. So, uh, you know, I'll take this any day of the week. That's awesome. Thank you for your time, Frankie. Best of luck this weekend. Our next question is from Rodney James. Sir? You have been amazing. Hey, what's up, man? It's your cousin. What's How up, you doing? Hey. hey, listen, this is probably a follow-up question that, or I'll ask you a follow-up question about this after the fight. Because I know when, when you're this close to, to stepping on the scale, it's, it's really hard to tell where your power and energy are going to be on fight night, right? Um, because right now I'm sure you feel completely depleted and, you know, the whole thing, lethargic. Um, but... As of right now, as you're as you're hitting pads, doing your last bit of weight cut, rolling things like this, light drills, um, are you feeling the same way that you felt when cutting to 45, or is it a little bit harder? I mean, I'll be 100 percent honest. I I feel pretty much the same uh, as I did going down to 45. Uh, I got my weight down early enough where uh, I'm not str I'm not stressing, 
And I really don't think it's going to be a struggle, honestly. It's going to be very comparable to when I went down to 45. And, you know, I've been still getting two workouts a day, still, you know, doing my normal routine. Tonight I'm going to go, you know, probably get a good five rounds of work with, uh, with Coach Moore. And, uh, and, and you know, just, just things is pretty much the same, honestly. Cool. And you mentioned earlier you got the UFC PI adjacent to the UFC Apex, which I don't know if you've had a chance to go there yet. A lot of people in your circle have or have fought there. Um, so what do you think? Like, what, what do you think about the, you know, the buzz around the Apex? Yeah, man, it, you know, it's uh, it's going to be a little different, you know, fighting in front of nobody. Um, but it's, you know, the UFC did a great job with this. Uh, you know, the, you got hats off to, to everybody that works for the UFC. They're pretty much making this a seamless transition for us fighters, uh, making sure we're safe. And, you know, thank God they could do this, man, because I'm sure you guys want to watch fights. I know we want to compete. And I'm just fortunate they're able to do that. Uh, and you know something? Uh, they're doing the same thing for us uh, in the media. And, and I told Dana White as much. So actually, thank you for mentioning that. You're the first person to say that. They're, they're going above and beyond with their uh, measures. Um, I want to address the elephant in the room, though. You know, you went a long time in your career without ever being finished. And I have to imagine that at, at some point that mentally it almost makes you feel like it's not even possible. You know, I, I certainly feel that way. Like it's impossible to finish me. But, you know, listen, what was the experience like with the Brian Ortega KO? And I don't just mean in the immediate aftermath. I mean, in the days that follow, what is the mental and physical um, repercussions that you, that you go through um, after that first one? Physically, I was fine uh, after that fight. Um, honestly, I, you know, I've been rocked, you know, probably worse in other fights. Um, but he did a good job of capitalizing on it and making the referee stop it. But mentally, you know, it's tough, man. I, I, I don't take losses very well, uh, especially knockout losses, I guess. Um, but I, I don't know if they sting any less. You know, a loss is a loss. And uh, it's just something you have to get over. I think, you know, in, in the long run, it makes you stronger, makes, your fort, makes you have a more mental fortitude, you know. Um, I'm not one to just, you know, get down and not get back up. So uh, I'll always get back up, and that, that's the most important thing. Right, right. And I think for you, uh, you've been pretty vocal about this in the past. I think the, the losses that sting the worst are, the, are those decisions that you, that you feel and that a lot of people feel that you should have won, which would have really changed uh, the story of your legacy completely, uh, unfortunately. Um, yeah, you know, those close, those razor thin ones are tough, you know, but I mean, I'm not the only guy that, that, you know, has been subject to, to bad judging, or at least I think so. So, you know, it kind of goes across the board in this sport, unfortunately. And uh, again, it's like another thing he's got to learn from. It's, uh, you know, life ain't easy and you're going to, you're going to get thrown a lot of, a lot of shit you don't want to deal with or a lot of shit you don't like, but you can't stay down. You just got to keep moving forward. Great attitude. Frankie, I got one more question for you. You mentioned earlier about New Jersey being, you know, one of the places, and of course, New York City was declared ground zero for uh, for COVID. Um, but if we turn on the news, you know, especially, uh, you know, like a month or so ago, there is so much craziness going on in the streets, especially in New York City and New Jersey got pretty crazy. I'm just wondering, um, uh, what's, it, what's it look like out there where you're at? Honestly, where I'm at, man, I'm on the Jersey Shore. Everything's peachy keen by us, Bob. You know, I don't get involved too much in that, that craziness and, uh, I just make sure my family's safe and, and, and I'm, I'm worried about, you know, my duties as, as, a, as, a, as a family man and, and as a fighter. And, and that's it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Edgar. We will see uh, both of y'all gentlemen uh, this Saturday. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Our last question is from Augusto Nieske with Samos MMA. Hi, Frankie. How are you? How are you doing? Good, man. You? Fine. Thank you. Uh, Frankie, taking taking into account that that this fight was booked, I think almost four times all over the year. Could we say that the camp for this fight was your longest training camp ever? It, it definitely feels like it. Um, started, you know, I was supposed to fight a month ago, so it pretty much add eight, add five five weeks to, to eight weeks. You know, what was that thirteen? I'm not good at math. <laughs> so yeah, thirteen weeks. I, I have done twelve weeks in the past. But uh, yeah, this is definitely the longest camp, and um, I'm excited. I'm excited to finally, you know, put all this work, you know, to play on Saturday. And did all this reschedule affect your preparation? No, it didn't. I mean, you know, the hiccups 
kind of sucked. Uh, my weight was getting was pretty close in July, but uh, I went home, took a week off, let my body rest, and gained a bunch of weight. And and then you know once right back to it, I I got squared away. I got you know um, <clears throat> I got pretty much free focused. And uh, and it was uh, to me, I, uh, it's a blessing in disguise. I've right? been able to prepare more, kind of fine tune things. Like I said, I, I was able to know that I could get close to the weight class without really feeling too depleted. Okay, and, and Frankie, uh, taking taking into account your experience and, and considering the the COVID nineteen context, uh, how are you adapting to to all these new things in in this fight week? Yeah, I mean, you know, adapting like every, we're all in the same boat, right? So I got to do it. My opponents got to do it. Everybody in the car's got to do it. So I'm just rolling with the punches. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not letting anything really affect me. Uh, it, it's it's new. It kind of makes it makes fight week a little more refreshing, I guess, in a sense, because. You know, I've never done it this way. You know, I've been fighting for a long time. Shit can get kind of redundant, but this is all new to me. So I'm looking at it that way. And which which kind of fight do you imagine for for Saturday? Did, did you did you change anything from from your last fights? I mean, I just always try to improve my skills. You know, I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna push the pace hard. Uh, training went well. My conditioning feels great. So I'm just gonna be a typical Frank Yeager fight. I'm gonna get in his face and, and push the push it from bell to bell. Okay, and my last one. What's your your analysis the the bantamweight division? What what do you bring to the division, and how do you think you you could place yourself in there? Yeah, I think this division is the, the hottest division right now. Uh, a lot of great young kids, a lot of great you know former champions, champions and whatnot. And um, yeah, I, I think uh, I could compete in any weight class that I choose to. And uh, I'm in bantamweight right now, and I'm gonna go make some noise on Saturday and put myself in it right right in the mix. Great, right, Frank. Thank you very much, and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. That's all we have for you today, Frankie. Thank, Thank you. you. Done. I thought he said last question. Hey guys, this is Praveen DeVos. Thanks for watching our video. Click on the subscribe button to catch all the latest videos from MMA India Show and MMA India.com. Thanks. Cheers.